Mr. President, uh, I ask consent to proceed as in morning business. Without objection. Mr. President, um, yesterday we received President Trump's first budget submission. He calls it a new foundation for American greatness. Well, that might get an award for fiction, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Instead of building a foundation for the American people, it pulls the rug out from under them. This budget has to be understood as something more than just a photo op with a slogan on the cover of the budget. You better tell them. Um, you know, the president's budget displays a fundamental lack of understanding of the role of government of, by and for the people and supporting the middle class in lifting up the most vulnerable among us and serving our values and interests as a nation. He proposes to cut non-defense discretionary spending by over $1.5 trillion, that's $1,500 billion over 10 years, including a $54 billion cut in fiscal year 2018, a $260 billion cut by 2027, That'd be a 40% cut to non-defense non programs in 10 years. <clears throat> That's not only short-sighted, it's irresponsible and unrealistic. We should be supporting opportunity. We should be creating jobs, not eliminating them. This country needs its jobs. Don't cut jobs, create jobs. We should be caring for our veterans. We should promote our health and the environment. These are important to all people. It doesn't make any difference what political party they belong to. We shouldn't be recklessly slashing vital lifelines to the American people. Now, sequestration has had some devastating consequences for both defense and non-defense programs. These consequences are going to last a generation. But the Trump budget would only extend and deepen those problems. We're leaving for the Memorial Day break, but I would ask members on both sides of the aisle, let's sit down as soon as we get back in June. Let's have Republicans and Democrats work together as the Senate is supposed to and, no and negotiate a budget deal based on parity. We did this in 2013, we did it in 2015, it worked well. And such a deal would allow the Senate to provide appropriations bills that reflect our true and enduring values as a nation. Now, the Trump budget proposes over $1.7 trillion in cruel and unsustainable cuts to important mandatory programs that provide a safety net of health and nutrition programs to those who are struggling most in our communities. Can you imagine in the wealthiest, most powerful nation on earth, we are going to cut out programs to help the people most in need? Much of the cuts in the Trump budget come from the Medicaid program. The president doubles down the dangerous programmatic changes and cuts that are included in the Trump care bill. Not only would enacting this budget make it harder for low-income families to receive health coverage through Medicaid, but the proposal also cuts nearly $6 billion from the Children's Health Insurance Program, which would force near-poverty children off health insurance. I know my own state of Vermont, not a wealthy state, small state, but when we started a program to make sure children had health care. It was costly at first. In the long run, it saved us all a great deal of money because we ended up being rated every year either the first or second healthiest state in the nation. You've got to have people healthy from the time they're children up through. You can't suddenly say, oh, we're going to spend a fortune. 
when you're an adult on illnesses that could have been taken care of as children. And then the President's budget proposes significant cuts to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. That supports food assistance for individuals and families in need. How does the President expect to make America great again if there are hungry children in our schools? Every parent knows a hungry child cannot learn. How can we be the greatest country in the world if we don't offer a helping hand to the most vulnerable among us? It has been and continues to be my goal that we complete the appropriations process in the Senate the way it's supposed to be done. Each of the 12 appropriations bills deserve debate and then a vote up or down on the Senate floor. Let Republicans and Democrats vote for the things they support, let them vote against the things they oppose. That's in the best interest of this country. I know Chairman Cochran chairs this goal. As Vice Chairman, I will work with him to do this. But this budget is an obstacle, not a pathway to meet this goal. The President's budget proposal is not bipartisan. In fact, I'm willing to bet if you put the President's budget on the floor today and ask for a vote up or down, even though the Republicans are the majority in the Senate, it would not pass. Because it doesn't make a hint of a gesture toward true bipartisanship. Appropriations works best when you have bipartisan cooperation. But it's also because it's not in the best interest of the country or the real priorities of the American people. And that's why it would not get even enough Republican votes to pass. It's unbalanced, it's needlessly provocative, it's appallingly short-sighted. Rural America, including rural states like Vermont, is missing in action in the President's budget. His budget eliminates key investments in rural communities leaving them without federal partnership support for everything from infrastructure, development, and affordable housing, to programs that preserve the environment, provide food for the elderly. It's a compilation of broken promises to working men and women and struggling families. It frays the lifelines to help vulnerable families lift themselves into the middle class. This Vermonter does not find that acceptable, and I doubt if others do. It eliminates the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. We call it LIHEAP. That would leave thousands of Vermonters out in the cold, but thousands throughout this country. The government should not be in the business of saying to families, okay, you got a choice. It's 10 degrees outside. You can either heat or you can eat. You can eat, either have enough warmth so that you don't freeze to death, or you can have food so you don't starve to death. But you can't have both. We're the most powerful, wealthiest nation on earth. What a choice to force on people. Now, my own state, unlike Vermont received nearly $19 million to help more than 21,000 households in all 14 counties across our state. It's a vital lifeline, especially important in rural communities. We can't slash investments in our rural communities. We can't abandon federal support for cleaning up Lake Champlain by eliminating the Sea Grant and Geographic programs, that'd be foolish. You'd waste the investments we'd already made. It would mean that the money we put in cleaning it up would end up being lost and you'd have to start all over again. There's a large and dynamic ecosystem in, the, in Lake Champlain. It's the largest body of fresh water in the United States outside of the Great Lakes. Borders Vermont and New York and Canada. It is a treasure, but you can't stand still. We don't want it to become polluted like other bodies of water throughout our country. You either advance or you slip behind. And once you start slipping behind, it becomes an escalating matter. 
In fact, the budget is, is full of cuts that advance the administration's anti-science, almost know-nothingism agenda. It eliminates thousands of scientists. It shuts off funding for research and it cures for everything from Alzheimer's to cancer. Mr. President, you can't say to people who are studying or trying to find a cure to cancer or so many other diseases, oh, we're going to cut your money for a few years, turn everything off, send the scientists home. But maybe in a few years, we might give you money again. You can't do that with medical research. The University of Vermont would lose millions of dollars for valuable research. Research you can't pause and hope to resume. We are so close to finding a cure for most kinds of cancer, just as we did years ago in polio. Are we going to turn that off? Are we going to say to the American people, we want to have a sloganeering budget, so sorry, uh, maybe when your grandchildren come along, maybe someday somebody will restore this science and we'll find a cure for cancer. Budget not only denies the reality of climate change, it eliminates all the Environmental Protection Agency's climate programs, from voluntary incentives to programs that seek to prevent further damage in public health and environmental quality. Climate change is very real. We're at a critical moment. Now is not the time to turn back the progress we've been making. The President has promised jobs, jobs, jobs. I would love to see jobs, jobs, jobs in this country. Uh, but under his budget, an estimated 4 million people, including veterans, including veterans, would lose access to employment and training services next year. 4 million Americans would lose that promise of a job. He would eliminate almost $4 billion from Pell Grants. You don't create jobs by denying young people access to affordable higher education or by slashing job training. Cutting the State Department's budget by more than 30% shows a clear lack of understanding of the vital role of soft power in our national security. As the Secretary of Defense said, if you're going to cut the State Department's budget this way, you better give me money to buy more bullets because I'm going to need them. The budget would eliminate life-saving nutrition programs. They would impede our ability to promote stability in increasingly volatile regions of the world. You know, America is not made safer by failing to feed the hungry. Defense Secretary Mattis, the man who's had experience in the military, is now our Secretary of Defense. He said, soft power is fundamental to our national security. That's been said by Secretaries of Defense and military leaders in both Republican and Democratic administrations. So, I would just note, Mr. President, the Trump budget would have serious, harmful consequences for our economy, for working families, for those who are struggling, for our environment, our health, for the seed corn of cutting edge scientific and technological research, and for our national security. This is foolish. It's not acceptable. You don't turn these things on and off for to make a sound bite. Sound bites don't make America strong. Sound bites don't continue the greatness of America. Tough choices keeps America great and helps the American people. So I would remind the White House that the power of the purse rests with Congress. As Vice Chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, I intend to exercise that power. And I'll work with Chairman Cochran in laying a bipartisan path forward. I would also note, Mr. President, and I would ask consent to put in the record a statement on international family planning. Without objection. I would note the importance of it. 
We had a man I admired greatly in this body, the Republican chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, Mark Hatfield. Strongly anti-abortion, but an honest and good man who said we had to have these family planning programs because without them, the number of abortions skyrocket, the number of deaths at birth skyrocket, and we have higher birth rates and 95% of which occur in the poorest countries that cannot feed or provide jobs for their people. Let's not, again, let's not make policy by soundbite. Let's make policy by what is best for our country, best respects the values of America, values that we try to demonstrate throughout the world. We also try to demonstrate to our own country, no matter where you are, whether you're Republicans or Democrats or independents, whether you're poor, rich, rural or urban, let's work on what is the best of America, not a budget that tries to polarize America and sets one group against another. Mr. President, I suggest I see nobody else Seeking recognition, I would note this um, this, this uh, table I have on the floor showing how we can, and we have a balance of putting all the money in a border wall in the Pentagon at the cost of the Department of Agriculture, Clean Energy, Climate Change, Environment, Education, Foreign Aid, Infrastructure, Healthcare, Middle Class, Civil Rights, Labor Unions, uh, uh, Nutrition Programs, Child Nutrition, Community Investments. Well, if we want to spend $40 billion on a wall that will make no sense and have the taxpayers pay for it, easy. Let's vote it up or down. I don't think the American people want it. They'd rather see that money spent on programs that educate people, that create jobs, that improve science, who finds cures for cancer and others, not for a wall that we will pay for, that nobody else will pay for. Mr. President, I yield the floor and suggest the absence of quorum. Thank you.